Looks like it. Perfect. Well, welcome, everybody. I am Erin McCuskey. I'm from the Northwest Colorado Small Business Development Center. And as you probably know, at this point, we're hosting this call weekly to be able to unpack the um, ever-changing, quickly flying news that's coming our way in this environment. So I'm excited about our presentation today because we're going to start shifting away from some of the what's happened this week to instead being able to look a little bit more forward thinking. So I want to invite all of the attendees to please use the Q&A uh, to submit your questions and we'll answer those as, as we're doing the webinar as much as we can. We'll also have a live Q&A at the end of the call and if we can't get to your question, we will follow up and post it on the Northwest SBDC website for you to review at a later time. Um, this call is being recorded and you'll be able to access it at a later time as well. So next slide, please. Next slide, yes. And I wanna give a shout out to our sponsors. Um, we have great support from Startup Colorado, the uh, Colorado Office of Economic Development and International Trade as well as Civic Canopy, who's helping us to facilitate these calls. So thank you very much to all of them for your support. Um, a quick look at our agenda today. We are going to spend the majority of the call talking about tourism. Um, what are our local experts predicting might happen for our region? How are they uh, changing up their marketing plans in response to that? And what can small business owners do now to be thinking about pivoting their business model, um, thinking ahead about is your business going to Im be impacted and what you might want to do to change things up? So we'll have uh, four different regional experts who are going to be talking through both what we're planning for Northwest Colorado, as well as some specific marketing tips that small businesses can utilize. Um, we will spend a little bit of time, time today talking about some federal updates as well as some unemployment updates, just because I know those questions are coming up. And as I mentioned, we'll have time for Q&A at the end. Next slide. So I'm going to just kick things off with that quick update regarding the CARES Act and some of the federal legislation because the big news of this week was that the PPP program hit its lending cap. And so that $350 billion that Congress allocated for that program has uh, hit its capacity. So what we know right now is simply that there is an ask from both of our US senators, as well as from our governor for Congress to refund those programs and also to uh, when they refund them to make some modifications and improvements to those programs so that we uh, can make sure that some of the businesses that maybe were struggling with their approval during the first round might be able to be approved more easily uh, if there is a second round of funding. The good news about it is that the SBA was able to provide about $6 billion of funding to Colorado small businesses. So that money is going to go a long way towards helping businesses in our region. We have been hearing um, quite a bit of success stories from people who are receiving those loans directly through their lenders. So we're hopeful that that program will be refunded and that we'll have an update of some sort next week. Um, along with that, the disaster loan, kind of known now as the IDLE, has been put on hold uh, as far as funding. However, if you've already submitted your application, you are likely still in the line uh, to be approved for that. So um, they are working through the approvals in the order in which the applications were received. Again, we've been hearing that small businesses in our region are starting to get those loans. Right now, it's primarily people who applied during March. But those of you who applied during April, even though the application is no longer live on the website, you are hopefully still in the line and we'll be uh, hearing back from the SBA one way or another with an update on your application. Finally, uh, this is not an area of expertise for me, but uh, there's been a lot of questions. I know everybody's waiting to find out more about the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, which predominantly covers that $600 of additional weekly funds um, and also makes 
self-employed sole proprietors and contractors eligible for collecting unemployment. Um, Colorado Department of Labor and Employment expects that the program is going to open for applications on Monday. They have updates right now on the website and you can see information or you can see the link for their website on the screen. Um, they are going to be doing a virtual town hall on Monday at 9.30 a.m. to be able to answer a lot of common questions, but we expect that there will be announcements made at that point, too. So we'll revisit um, the links for that virtual town hall and a reminder at the end of the call, but just want to let you know that that is good news that's on the horizon. So with that, I'm going to turn over the call now to Kat Pappenbrock from the Office of Economic Development and International Trade and she is going to help introduce our speakers uh, and the tourism topic. Thank you, Kat. Yeah, great. Thanks so much, Erin, and welcome everyone on the call. Um, we're so excited to get to welcome two of our most passionate state advocates and tourism leaders on the call with us today to kind of talk through some statewide issues, regional issues, best practices, things that they're seeing on the ground. So with that, um, I want to introduce uh, Lisa Langer, who's the Director of Tourism Promotion for um, Visit Glenwood Springs, and uh, Chris Romer, the President and CEO of the Vail Valley Partnership. So, um, Chris, I'm actually going to start off our, our session with you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your role on the Governor's Economic Response Task Force and kind of some of the, some of the pieces that your group has been recommending back up to them as well as kind of the statewide and even regional impacts that you've been seeing from COVID so far? Sure, there's a lot to unpack in that question. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to, to join you guys today. And um, Kat, I'll, I'll start with the tourism task force. So as, as you probably know, as everybody probably knows, the governor had set up a number of different industry-led um, task force models be it innovation or in, in our case, tourism with statewide representation from really across the entire state and across a number of different tourism and hospitality industries. We've met, it's led by Richard Sharp, the CEO of Visit Denver. Um, and we've met via phone and um, call a couple times and really came up with a number of statewide initiatives from a big picture standpoint of what would immediately help the um, tourism industry and our hospitality industry recover quickly as we come out of this. The first was indemnification for tourism businesses who are helping in the short term with housing um, employees, first responders, et cetera. So how do we provide indemnification through executive order for tourism businesses? The second was support for tourism industry employees and for businesses, things like um, cash flow, deferred uh, tax payments, mor moratorium on new laws coming out of the um, general session when the legislature starts to meet again in, in May. We've asked the governor to request a moratorium on any new laws that would impact business. Um, we've requested clear and consistent messaging statewide to help communities um, march from the same playbook for the state to take the lead to provide some of those talking points and to ensure that we're telling our guests and visitors and second homeowners the, um, the same message and we're hearing from the entire state and not different things from, say, Eagle County and Garfield County and Pitkin County and Route County and et cetera. One of the big things that we are advocating and fighting for is to ensure funding for the Colorado Tourism Office moving forward. We think it's really important to, um, as, as one of Colorado's largest job sectors and the one sector that supports our municipal efforts through sales tax collections is for in, in continued funding for the Colorado Tourism Office. And last and, and certainly not least, is advocating for additional federal relief. Um, we encouraged and advocated for relief as part of the CARES Act, and now moving on to CARES 2.0, or whatever version that will be called, the, really the fourth version. Um, and I know that Aaron had touched on that a little bit. So a continuation of the PPP, 
um, continued funding of the IDLE program, et cetera. So continuing to advocate for that federal relief to benefit our industry. Um, that's it from a statewide level. And Kat, I'll be honest, I forgot the other parts of your question that you wanted me to touch on. No, absolutely. Thanks for that. It, it is a lot. And, and thank you guys for the work that you're doing um, up at the governor's level. The other one was just kind of, you know, I think pretty much everybody knows the data in their own community. But um, has there anything been passed down yet, either through your committee or otherwise about the current the current impact right now to the overall tourism industry? Yeah, I did see a report from our um, the Colorado Workforce Center earlier today. Um, and it, it told us what we already knew which was that the tourism industry has been the most impacted. Hospitality has been the most impacted. Um, 20, almost 22% um, of the un uninsurance claims were from restaurants and um, another 7% were from accommodations. So amusement and recreation industries was 5%. So we're seeing three of the top four or five um, sectors for unemployment claims are coming from tourism and hospitality. So we're clearly in the sector. Well, well, this um, the COVID nineteen virus is industry agnostic, right? It doesn't it doesn't care what industry you're in, um, and the economic stay at home and shelter orders and public health orders at a county and statewide level impact many many industries. It has an oversized impact on um, restaurants, hospitality, hotels. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for that upper level overview, Chris. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Lisa here, actually, um, and talk a little bit about what it's like to be um, both a destination marketing organization as well as a business support organization, um, where we are now and um, how you're kind of shifting a little bit and how you're working. So Lisa, do you want to talk a little bit about the messaging that you're doing with Visit Glenwood and how you guys are pivoting within Glenwood Springs with your businesses? Yes, thanks, Kat, and thanks, everybody, for uh, being on the call. Um, it's nice to uh, actually talk to people other than my cat. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, so um, we put everything on pause, of course, marketing-wise, as soon as this hit. Uh, so mid-March, everything was paused. We were all geared up for a great spring break, as many people across the state were. Um, lots and lots of cancellations at that time. So what we did was we switched our focus, paused all of our um, major media buys until uh, we could safely gear up for um, hopefully a good summer or at least a, a moderate summer. Uh, we started doing a reschedule don't cancel campaign. And um, we have really gotten great, great reviews from this campaign. We, um, we asked people to share past photos or uh, experiences that they've had in Glenwood Springs. And if they've never been to Glenwood Springs to share photos from our website or from social media uh, and tell us what they plan to do when it's safe to travel again. And so uh, with that, we're doing a contest. So whether it's email or uh, Instagram or Facebook uh, posts or even Twitter, um, they can put on there what their plan is and what they'd like to do when they can safely come back to Glenwood Springs. Um, then they will be entered into a contest where um, they can win attractions passes. So we have the major attractions that have donated passes um, that are good for a year. And, uh, and that way we, we can um, support and, um, and encourage planning uh, during that time. And then uh, gearing into summer, We've started with our, uh, a video that is inspirational and messages um, that you can get away from the crowds and enjoy uh, a peaceful place uh, and still kind of keeping that same messaging that is more of a planning type message uh, and an inspirational type message rather than a hard sell. Uh, we've found that that is working really, really well. Um, and then that actually has been put on hold as far as the launch until about May 20th. And the reason for the delay in that initially we were going to launch um, May 1st. So our city government had um, put in a mandate to close all short term lodging through May 7. And then um, the Forest Service came out with their directive 
throughout the Rocky Mountain region to close all managed trails and campgrounds through May 31st. So uh, that affected Hanging Lake and that affects us greatly. So we figure right before Memorial Day, we'll start launching this inspirational message that people should start planning and thinking about um, summer and coming back to visit. Uh, then we are going to uh, work with, we are working with the chamber and the, um, the downtown development authority and the city on a summer stimulus package where uh, we hope to get some of our uh, tourism promotion reserve funds and actually go out and buy $50 gift certificates to uh, restaurants, attractions, and some retail, and give those as gifts to people who actually come on weekdays during the summer when it is definitely would be less crowded. I mean, we're not anticipating seeing a huge influx of people to start with, but we want to get people thinking about coming and stimulate the economy at the same time. So those are some of the ideas that we've been doing. A um, couple of the videos I've sent links to uh, the group, so um, that can be sent out after this call. Yeah, and and for all of the um, attendees um, via the chat, I just I just shared those uh, blog posts and video links for you to uh, follow up on. It really is super inspiring and really easy way, right? Reach out to your fans to to share their best memories. Um, so at least I'll keep it. Oh, go ahead. One of the things I was going to say is um, the most recent thing to, that we noticed that was very, very well received and got a huge engagement. Of course, right now, people are home. They're on their computers. They're looking for things to do. They're looking for inspiration. And uh, we posted some cool photos from the Glenwood Hot Springs New Attraction River that opened last year or last, yeah, last summer. Um, and we posted those photos kind of as a test to see how people would react, it was overwhelming, the response. So people want to see fun activities they can see themselves doing when the time is right. So that, that's another um, way to start ramping up and, and keeping top of mind. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. Just keep some messaging out there that, that makes people remember that you're around. Perfect. Awesome. Well, um, I know both of you are really involved with your local business response efforts, too. Um, I wanted to kind of turn it back to Chris here a little bit to talk a little bit about the, um, the Eagle County economic response team that you've set up and how you're breaking that out into industry clusters. Um, can you talk us through that a little bit and uh, what that's doing for your community and how that's helping you talk about this quote unquote reopening timeline where everybody knows reopening is somewhere down the line, but what that looks like, we don't know yet. Right, um, we don't know yet, but the, it's important for us, collectively us, to be working on economic recovery and what, what does it look like when we reopen? What does reopening look like? And how do we maximize our economic activity and in a responsible manner, right? So we all want to open up our communities and our destinations um, and have that, that maximum economic activity with visitors and second homeowners and um, our restaurants and attractions. But, but we know that the public health orders and the public safety needs to come first. Um, so what, what we've done working with Eagle County and working with our one of the Vail Valley Foundation, a community foundation, is set up industry clusters from groups including hospitality, um, education and youth services, nonprofit and human services, events and venues, real estate, government, healthcare, etc. And each of these industry clusters or industry task forces. Um, we'll have industry leaders throughout our community, and um, they will be tasked with identifying um, expectations, uh, an operating plan for their industry, what their process will be in terms of communications, communications to their, to their customers, um, phasing, how they phase in the opening, um, how they ensure collaboration, 
with an industry-led bottom-up effort, understanding that that needs to go through public health and it needs to go through the governor's office. So it's, it's respecting those boundaries and those parameters that exist, but it's also letting industry have a voice and say, here's the things that we think we should do. Um, I don't even know what that means. Maybe taking temperature or what social distancing engages in in a, um, in a restaurant or what events might look like if and when events um, start again this summer. And the last part of that is really the idea of, of role clarity and ensuring that our um, message is being um, distributed not just internally, but also to our community and to our region, our regional partners, and to our visitors. So again, each of those industry clusters, and there's six or eight of them, um, with the goal of maximizing economic activity, how do they set up a oper recommended operating plan, their communications and phasing, um, collaboration with public health partners and, and other county partners, and then rural clarity. So that's our approach. We, we have found historically in Eagle County, and I'm sure it's similar in many other communities, that when industry can help write the plan and industry has a voice in, in setting things up, uh, that industry is more likely to abide by the plan, right? Rather than a top-down directive that says, here's what you need to do. Um, that often causes more resentment than it needs to of, oh, I don't, I don't care what people tell me. I want to do my own thing. Um, when industry gets to write the plan and, and it's thoughtful and listening to and doing it in concert with um, public health, then the the buy-in is much higher and the, the peer pressure for other, you know, people will tell their cohorts, you know, their neighboring restaurant or their neighbor, neighboring ac activity partner, um, hey, here's the way we have to do it because we wrote this plan. So that's our model, that bottom-up model designed to increase the engagement across industry sectors, designed to give some ownership and designed to ensure that we have consistent a consistent voice and um, messaging in our communications. Yeah. So for both of you, Chris and Lisa, um, you know, you're both in communities that have pretty, pretty strong tourism destination marketing programs, as well as industry clusters. Um, for some of our other businesses on the call, if they're, if they're not quite seeing that in their community yet, or they need some best practices, what would be your like number one recommendation to give them to kind of create, you know, either stay engaged in that, in, in the messaging side of this, um, or stay engaged with, with those communications between public health and their government? Yeah, I'll take that first and then let Lisa uh, jump in. I, I think that the, the top recommendation I would have is to engage with your Chamber of Commerce or your Economic Development Corporation or your county. Every county in Colorado is going to be working on economic recovery plans. And they're all going to be structured a little bit differently, but work with the entity or entities that are helping to lead that charge so that you can have a voice at the, at the table and um, your voice can be heard with your, your concerns, but also your ideas and your, your contributions to assist in, in reopening. It's, um, it often feels better to, have, to be action oriented, right? And to feel, and to be, to be doing. And so being a part of these committees are part of these task forces, again, through your chamber or economic development or county, um, gets you a seat at the table and gets you more involved and engaged with having a voice. Yeah, I'll second that. Uh, every Friday morning, we have a call with uh, chamber, visit Glenwood, um, the economic development, uh, city officials, and uh, the downtown development authority. And then there are also industry-specific people. There's a restaurateur, a realtor, uh, and a hotelier on the call. Um, next time, we're going to add a, uh, a Colorado Mountain College participant because uh, they're doing a lot of things now, reaching out to um, various community members and business members to try to get um, recovery going. Um, so, yeah, we brainstorm ideas. Um, that's kind of how this summer stimulus idea came up. We are all pooling money 
in order to um, be able to assist small businesses in the community. So, um, yeah, I would I would definitely say collaboration is the way to go. Well, I know um, for both of you, you're going to stick around and stay for our Q&A. So I just want to thank you both so much for making time. I know everybody is so busy in their own communities and just want to acknowledge um, thanks for sharing some great practices with our with our other uh, our other businesses and other support organizations that are on the phone as well. So thanks, guys. Um, next slide. So um, I wanted to just give a little quick pin, um, and this will be this will be available after the meeting as well with all of the links live. But um, Monday, the Colorado Tourism Office is going to be rolling out their phased marketing plan. So if you want to see what the state is doing at that level, um, there's just an invitation on Monday morning to join in and uh, see what that's doing and to stay connected with their messaging and all of their business support and community support that they're doing as well. And that's it for me. Back to you, Erin. Uh, okay, great. I think from here, we're going to turn it over to our next presenter, Greg Olson. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. Yes, Greg Olson is from Growl Agency and I'm going to let him tell us a little bit more about his background, but he's going to uh, take us through some uh, small business marketing tips. Thank you, Greg. Yes, hello, everybody. Oh, can you hear me okay? Can yes. you hear me okay? Okay, great. Yes, Thank you. we can hear you. Thank uh, you. My, okay, my name is Greg Olson. I'm the founder and CEO of Growl Agency. Um, we're based in Grand Junction, Denver, and we have an office in Vietnam. We have uh, clients across the country. Um, we've been working in economic development for many years and different types of uh, community involvement. And uh, this has been a real interesting journey for us and what we're seeing across the country. I'm really glad to listen in on everything and all the different speakers on um, this call and other calls. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, what I'm going to talk about is just kind of some things that I'm seeing and maybe it'll inspire. Lisa, you had some really great points. And uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, more about that of what we're starting to see. And really, I think we're all unclear about how things are going to open back up. And as we had these marketing plans and we we're all ready for this summer and what we're gearing up for and where we're marketing, all that got thrown out the window. And now we're restructuring kind of our um, new plan. And the last call I was on, um, it was indicated like our response our uh, reopening and our recovery. So what we kind of have talked about here is how, what's adapting to this new economy and it's probably more adapting to an unknown economy. And right now we're starting to uh, see a lot of this virtual tourism start taking off. And we'll kind of walk through uh, some examples that I have. Um, so I'm going to the next slide. You know, we hear the word new normal and I'm probably getting sick and tired of it like a lot of other people are, but it's something that we really have to um, grasp onto. Social distancing, wearing masks, um, constant sanitation and hand washing stations are kind of the new normal. So, and why I talk about this is that we are looking when the governor, and I appreciate Chris on the phone and what um, on the call and talking through some things that you're noticing. As I listen to the governor talk, I'm looking for a little bit of foreshadowing and kind of like, what is happening or what do they appear could happen? And really what I hear and what we're sensing is that social distancing will still be here through the summer. And we have to prepare for that in all of the marketing and how we're going to manage through this, whether that's uh, wearing masks, how we're gonna sanitize, are we gonna have hand stations around the community, hand washing stations. So we step back and we look at where, how are we gonna market? And so some of that is, I think regionally in these, uh, kind of circles going, you know, outward from our communities and really looking at these day trips. And I'm, Lisa, I appreciate you brought up some really good points there. You know, we're going to have people coming, wanting to get out of their house and this work from home that has become the new normal um, versus flying in. I think we all know that airlines, I mean, it's going to take a while for people to take big trips and maybe, maybe we'll be wrong, but I just don't see that picking up um, right away. So we all need that revenue to come in. Um, so maybe it is that 100 to 200 miles kind of day trips or overnights. Um, and again, you talked about that too, Lisa, and about brand ambassadors. And, um, and I'll talk about that a little more, but you're right on about going to your past customers and past people who have visited and stayed. And this is where if companies and 
Airbnbs and bread and breakfast and restaurants and all those entities had email addresses and a way to communicate. Everybody's at home and ready to do that. They're, they're looking for some type of way to have that virtual engagement um, with brands. And they don't want to hear really you have what is your COVID-19 policy. Everybody's tired of that. Um, you know, digital and snail mail together. So if we have a budget and you have something you can mail, people are home. They're looking at their mail more than they ever have. We're seeing that uptick. Um, of course, social media, um, uh, people are engaged on it now more than ever in all different ages because, again, we're stuck at home. Safety and cleaning policies will be the kind of new normal of like people have to feel safe that <clears throat> hotels or surfaces or things like that are going to be cleaned. I want to go to the next slide. So we talked about engagement, um, things that we're starting to see, which are kind of neat, and it's been fun watching companies that are really rising up and uh, coming up with great examples. So one of the things we saw was uh, there's virtual wine and food pairings where uh, where wineries can ship wine or, or or those types of elements are shipping it. They're talking about their wine on a YouTube channel or a Zoom channel and having a chef also talk about um, how to make something at home that you can make family friendly. They're keeping the brand front and center. Zoom backgrounds are becoming wildly big as you can see the one that's behind my head um, that we created is just because everybody has like maybe odd art or you're working from a basement or something like that. So all of a sudden overnight, everybody had that. So we're seeing communities or bars, restaurants, hotels, um, uh, tourism offices create these kind of fun backgrounds. I think Lisa was talking about that, that people really want to use and share. So that is something. Coloring books for, um, I think uh, your family can download and having contests with that. Growl created one just to have something different to do. And I was amazed about how popular it became um, just to give something different for adults and uh, families and kids to do. And we've really seen that take off. Playlists, uh, you know, coming together as a community and creating people are at home listening to podcasts, listening to music. So um, we're seeing communities, entities create their own Spotify playlists. And these are free things to do pretty much. Um, brand ambassadors, um, just like Lisa was talking about, is probably the key to all this for you to engage the people that have fell, fall in love with your community, your entity, your ski town, your restaurant, your Airbnb, is to go back to them and ask them, just like she was saying, to share a story, a past picture, enter to win, get 10% off, um, buy, you know, here's a, you know, support us. And a lot of people are reaching out and supporting these communities, like buy now, support, you know, um, we're seeing, you know, um, hotels and restaurants or restaurants and tour, tour, tour offices combining together to say, hey, if you buy from us, you also will, will get this paired up for you when you come. So I don't forget about that. Your current customers are going to be the easiest ones to market to. Uh, Do-it-yourself kits and virtual crafting. Um, Raspberry Boutique in Florida, Colorado is doing a great job with that working with their local chamber. They're creating these kits. They'll mail or drop off, depending on how the distance wise. And then they have a Zoom channel where they'll help you put the kit together. They're having a girls' night in experience. And so I think it's next Friday. So people can actually hang out on Zoom, talk, do this paint kit, um, craft kit together and have this little um, like community engagement thing. So think of it as a virtual crafting happy hour. Some of you might have heard of the um, uh, farm in California that's actually a lot has goats to your meetings. I'm not sure how many people have seen that. That has been a very popular um, uh, something that another, um, it's sweetfarm.org and a good look on there, they have goat to meeting. And that's been something that's been really interesting. They're raising funds and money. It's a nonprofit, but you could see how you can actually um, create something new and virtual that people are looking for. So they offer up 20 minute virtual private tours, 10 minute corporate meeting cameos where you can have, um, you know, a goat or a llama join. And it's been, they've had so much press on it, um, which is all great free press. And then also um, a backlog of people wanting to sign up for it. 
So that's been interesting. Let's go to the next slide. So we're also having to rethink our local events, how we market to them. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have local farmers markets and uh, the conversations we're having is how do we market? What should we consider? Um, we're having to have a couple different plans as we go into that. And we, some of the speakers talked about that um, because there's vendors that want to get involved, but again, social distancing rules, hand washing stations, um, how do we distance? How do we plan to have these farmers markets if we're allowed to? And again, it's food related. So we believe that you could have food related farmers markets based on um, kind of the government or governors, what the law is, I guess it's um, the probably people on the call here today that would know more about that. But if it comes to that, um, let's, we're gonna have to figure things out. Are we gonna have to have screens, masks, single entry and exit points? But we do wanna market it to say we're open and we're ready for business. And then we just have to be prepared for that. Uh, we're seeing things like offering up the social distancing campfires, uh, which means people can actually, when it does turn back on, they're planning to say like, hey, we're going to allow 10 feet apart, um, allowing people to commute, to sit around and, you know, socialize again. It's going to be one of the biggest things that we're going to see because people are really tired of the work from home and they're going to want to get out. And so have these kind of moments and environments and safe places to go. Um, social distancing tours is another one. And if you think about that, it's like people are going to come to your community, but if we do have that opportunity, they're going to keep social distancing, which I think they will, that how can we give them a brown bag lunch? Can they have a map, go and do something, keeping them spread out to um, in certain areas to enjoy your community and then come back and maybe have a happy hour um, or something that is um, delivered to them or they can pick up, but they can come to your community stay there safely and spend money. Let's go to the last slide here. So kind of the recap is we talked about think differently about engagement. Um, we're not so much going outward to this large community. Um, even if you have customers that came from Texas, I, you can still communicate with them. It's maybe they'll support, they know people local. Do you want to continue to support and uh, do something um, differently, uh, much like uh, they might buy something like downtown Durango has, they've opened up a really popular, which we're seeing other communities come through, which is uh, Share the Love Durango. So they're creating this auction, this online purchase, things like that. So it's another great way to help market the community. Uh, but think about your low audience that's close and how you can um, entice them to come back. Um, this is the perfect time, and Lisa brought that up too, about gauging your work from home audience. Don't forget them, they're bored. Wives and husbands are now working so closely together in a home, maybe they have kids. Um, so we want a way to kind of escape and having contests, getting your visuals in front of them, um, games, um, planning that next trip, where would you want to go? What does it look like for you? Surveys, you know, what would it look, how would you feel about this? These are things I think you should not forget. Um, launch and manage social distancing events we talked about, and then really market those virtual experiences as much as you can and keep your brand in front of them. Um, last slide, I think it's just for my contact information. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions, um, we'll be glad to kind of answer or give you any kind of other examples that might be a fit or we'll take any questions here. Thank you for your time. Great, Greg, thank you so much. Um, Real-time examples are always the best. There's just some really cool innovation happening. Um, and Greg will stick around to do Q&A. So if you guys have any, please put them in there and we'll move into that section in just a minute. Um, next slide, please. Um, yeah, just before we, uh, we move into um, Q&A, um, just two quick updates. Um, for those of you that are part of community efforts, there's a really great video that was put together by the Colorado Tourism Office um, called Best Practices in Communications During COVID. And uh, it's Dave Santucci, who's one of their craft consultants, um, as well as Lake County and Chafee County and how they're dealing with the messaging. So kind of like what Lisa was presenting earlier. Uh, it's just a 20 minute video if you guys wanna take a look at it after the fact. Um, next slide, please. Okay, and then the other big update, as, Mary, as Aaron had mentioned, um, with the kind of suspension of PPP and IDLE for the time being, while we're waiting on additional stuff to come down from the Fed, um, the Office of Economic Development and International Trade has worked really hard to try to get some alternative funding resources live on um, both the Choose Colorado website 
and the Colorado SVDC website. Um, those links that are kind of highlighted there, that's kind of where they live on the page. And it'll take you to a Google spreadsheet. Um, and it's something that's sorted by type of funding. So deferrals, um, you know, loans, lines of credit, grants, other where sometimes it's technical assistance around financials. We're up to about 160 different assets in there and it's being updated every day. Um, I'd say as with all the people who are working on it right now, I'm hoping it's only about 25% built out and we'll just continue to show what communities are doing to help the businesses specifically. Um, so just wanted to link that up with all of you as you're looking for potentially other sources to help support your business communities during this time. Um, we also have a link for funding for nonprofits. Um, that's something that we're not technically tracking in in the OEDIT document because Philanthropy Colorado has been doing an exceptional job of updating that. Um, and then also the Colorado COVID uh, funding relief program. That might be something that some of your community organizations may want to look into for some recovery efforts. Um, okay, next slide. Let's take it to Q&A then. Um, we had a couple of great, oh, sorry, and I think um, Aaron may have already mentioned this at the beginning, but that's that um, unemployment town hall on Monday um, to kind of talk about the um, pandemic unemployment assistance. All right, next slide. All right, so um, a question, um, I'll turn some questions on this one. Thank you guys. Um, so Lisa, Chris, um, I mean, even Greg with what you're seeing in the Grand Junction, are folks still planning large scale events this summer or are they just taking a wait and see approach? I can take that to start. Uh, we have some really large events that have been uh, canceled and they don't say canceled, they usually say postponed to 2021. But uh, Strawberry Days is our, our signature event here in Glenwood Springs, um, happens the third full weekend of June and that um, actually got postponed to 2021 very recently. Uh, most of our events who, that are through the summer have been either canceled completely or pushed to the fall. So there are still some events that are late summer, um, early fall that hopefully will happen, but we don't know at what scale. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with that. I think my advice is uh, most events will not happen this summer. Um, large events, I don't see how that is, how it can. I know it's very disappointing for people. I hope I'm wrong, but um, we have clients across the country in like Milwaukee. They have Summerfest. They're moving out to September, so we're hoping that fall events pick up and stay active. Um, but I would say anything, you know, June, July, August is going to be a challenge. I mean, unless we get a, um, some type of cure or testing or things like that that will be community-wide so we can, um, people can feel safe. And also, I, but I don't believe we're gonna see any of those. And I think we're gonna, as I said, we're gonna come up with a new plan about how we draw people in, how we communicate, um, and then really get ready when we finally can have those events um, live again. But I would say most events over the summer I'm seeing across the country being at a minimum moved to the fall um, or canceled altogether until next year. Yeah, and, and in Eagle County, I think we're seeing a lot of people um, hold off as long as possible. We've had a signature big event, the GoPro Mountain Games, which brings somewhere in the range of 60 to 70,000 people um, move from June to August. Um, and I think everyone's in a wait and see mode on events. I don't think that... Um, I don't think that it's, I think it's a little too early to full on cancel everything. If you're, if you're outside of June, I mean, through June is a different question, but into July and August. Um, but it's certainly on the radar. I, I, I don't have similar to Greg's comments. I don't have a lot of confidence that events will look mm -hmm. the same as they historically have. Although I do think we'll see some events um, that are easier to, um, mitigate the number of people and how they people are spaced. It could still occur this summer. Great, thanks. For I those. agree. Local, local. Sorry, uh, just local um, events. I think are going to be like your community or bringing in your uh, own community are going to be in place. I know in Fruit of Colorado, they're even like Thursday night concerts are looking at canceling, um, and that was just locals. And I don't. Again, I'm not trying to be. I like to be optimistic and plan. I like to plan and plan forward, but. I think we should be prepared. And also people get angry when they think that they're buying tickets or they get a refund. And the more we stretch that out in a community, 
it's a really downer for the brand and a downer for the community that we have stretched those those potential travelers out um, or, you know, still trying to entice them with tickets and things like that. I think from a marketing and branding part, that's what we really have to be careful is like stop trying to sell tickets to something we don't know. That's great advice. Yeah. So how about, um, how about messaging to second homeowners? Um, you know, all, all of us along that I-70 corridor um, certainly have strong populations there. Um, is anyone focusing messaging to bringing them back or just keeping them up to date? What does that look like? I think for us, it's a, the, it, the second homeowner community, as you said, along the throughout mountain communities, really not just the I-70 corridor, uh, but it's a big, big part of our economy and it's a big, big um, economic impact and supporters of our restaurants and retail stores and activities and everything else. Um, I think that when the time is right, the message that the community is open for um, visitors and including our second homeowners, you know, we're, we're talking about some tactical components on what we might do um, to really celebrate that. But we don't have a lot flushed out just yet, but I think when the time is right, um, you welcome them with open arms through your through your messaging and through your tactical implementation um, of, of different things to know that to know that they are welcome and know that they are part of the community and really appreciated. Great, Thanks. I agree to that, and I see uh, Western Colorado. Um, that's how they're communicating. They're saying we love you. Um, we're you know just not now. And I think uh, what we're seeing across is that how do you engage them? And Chris, you mentioned that statewide, that the messaging is consistent. It's easier for all of us to support that. So down from the state level to say um, across the board where people understand if you have second home, stay home. Um, but also how do we engage those second homeowners? This, this is wherever they travel, um, that's, that's their second community, almost their favorite community. If they live in Denver, but they come to Vail or they come to Gunnison or they come to Fruta. This is almost their favorite community. They just wish they could live there full time. And they also want ways, many of them, to get involved. So I would ask that your messaging goes, when you're ready, we have great ways for you to get involved and be involved in our community and be involved in our recovery. And I, I, I guarantee they'll rise up and support every way they can. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Another one. I'm a local hotel, motel, or Airbnb, right? And I'm trying to find ways to, to generate or maintain some sort of revenue right now. Any ideas on creative ways to stay in front of potential customers and continue to bring in income? Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> um, I think that one of the things we've done, and I think um, Lisa talked about this for Glenwood, in a in a similar context, um, we did a virtual a virtual um, vacation to the Vale Valley, showcasing some of our attractions and things. I think if you're looking for short term cash flow, you could sell um, like future stay bonds. You know, something like um, for every hundred dollars, you receive one hundred and twenty dollars worth of redemption when the time comes. Um, so you're doing a discount, but you're increasing your cash flow at the current time. Um, and if you're in the lodging business, working with your public health and hospital to see if maybe first responders um, or others might need short-term lodging would be a way to go for the um, that hotel-type product or, or motel-type product. Um, but I think the the what I've seen really successful for places is doing the the idea of the restaurant bond or the lodging bond, where you're selling a hundred dollars worth of cash flow today for $120 redemption in the future. That's a really good point, Chris. And um, here we in Glenwood Springs, we've asked our lodging and our activities partners to give us your best summer deal so that we can start, you know, messaging through um, a lovely deals page on the website that we will be having these specials and, you know, just send us your best deal um, that has some kind of great discount and, um, and we'll put it out there. Um, so if you are in a, lar in a smaller community, maybe it doesn't have an active uh, DMO or a chamber, you could um, volunteer that information uh, to whatever entity is uh, 
you know, leading the charge in your community. But I, I think, um, you know, getting some special deals out there uh, at this time, because people really want to plan and, and they're going to do really short term planning too. So we're seeing that, you know, people are going to take same day flights or they're going to take same day trips or they're going to decide on a Friday to come to the mountains on Saturday. So you need to really think ahead to, uh, uh, you know, to spring those last minute deals so that people can just jump on them. Yeah, what great recommendations. And just to connect the two, the deals and your healthcare workers, don't forget about your traveling nurses that are under contract. So connect them and the hospitals with those deals. Well, with that, I think we're gonna close up Q&A. Thank you all again so much for joining us. I'm turning it back over to Erin to close us out and give you your resources. Thank you so much, um, Kat, that was fantastic. And thank you, especially to our panelists, Lisa, Chris, and Greg for your expertise. Um, I want to just close with a couple quick reminders. First of all, we have some great webinars coming up next week. Um, a reminder that that unemployment webinar or virtual town hall rather will be Monday morning. You can find the links to all of this on that top website that's on your screen, the northwestscdc.org. Um, also starting on Monday, there's going to be a great series that will be happening every Monday, every Monday called Managing in Times of Uncertainty which is being um, hosted by the SBDC, but it's going to be a one hour nuts and bolts type of class to help with um, cash flow ideas. And we have some experts who actually do our consulting with small businesses to help provide some of those uh, really tactical ideas to help you. So those are free classes. I really encourage you to check that out every Monday at noon. On Tuesday, we'll be having an employment law webinar with Tina Harkness from Employers Council, and she'll be talking about all of the recent legislation and how that impacts employers. So Tina's at one of the top in the state for that subject, so certainly check that out. Again, this is on our website. And finally, I just wanted to remind you that the SBDC is here to offer free one-on-one -on -one confidential consulting. Everything is being done uh, virtually right now. So if you need some help with these cash flow ideas, with your marketing strategy, with um, some of the various alternative funding sources, please just go to our website. You can request a consulting appointment there and I'll get you matched with uh, a consultant to help with your specific type of request. We'd love to help you out. So again, thank you so much to all of our partners. Hope you have a great Friday afternoon and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.